So today we're gonna to be looking over four different dividend stocks that I'm gonna be buying for the month of June. Now, of course, these are all stocks relative to what I already have in my portfolio. So definitely keep that in mind when it comes to looking at these different companies. Now, we're gonna jump into my portfolio here, take a look at each stock as I go through them, as well as on seekingalpha.com, all the little details on why I decided to make these kind of the priority for the month of June. So let's go ahead and jump into this actual portfolio here. Um, I'm using currently M1 Finance, which is what I love having for my dividend investing. If you're interested in it, check it out on the link in the show notes down below. Uh, that does help support the channel, but that lets me continue to provide free stuff like this for you guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into my consumer products pie right over here. So I get to have different sectors as you can see here. So the first one is actually gonna be in this little pie here. Actually two of them are gonna be in here, but we're gonna go over one of them first, of course. So the first one here is gonna be the Kraft Heinz company, um, ticker number KHC. Um, so right now I have about $125 in value uh, with about 4.16, four shares uh, for some reason I couldn't read that uh, right now I have an average share price of 29.74 um, and the market has done pretty well as of this recording so now the market is up at thirty dollars and twenty two cents for the stock itself so obviously I wouldn't be dollar cost averaging at this point but still not a bad deal we're gonna be looking at some of their information here so we're gonna go on to seekingalpha.com uh, which is right over here and let's go ahead and take a look at some of this information now there's a lot more that I do that's not here on camera just because I do a lot of uh, deep dives for myself, but just to kind of give you some ideas of what I'm looking at when it comes to you know what I want to invest in for dividends. Um, obviously, one of the big things is always making sure, you know checking out on the PE ratio. Um, I like to have it around 15 to 20. Um, anything above that um, might be a little bit too much for me if I'm trying to look for a dividend stock, uh, but obviously it's never a bad thing depending on where the company is trying to go. So. PE ratio is 12.87. And then let's go to the dividend uh, scorecard, which is my favorite thing to look at here on Seeking Alpha. So as you can see here, our dividend yield uh, right now is 5.34%. So a really solid dividend um, based off of the current price point that it's at. Now, one thing normally when I talk about uh, dividends is the five-year growth rate. I do really pay attention to this stuff. I think it's critical when it comes to having your money grow for you. This is currently at a negative, which you don't see too, too often, but um, obviously with a lot of things that was going on with Kraft Heinz, they did take a dividend cut recently, which normally would scare me when it comes to investing into a stock that I'm trying to have for a long-term dividend growth, but they were definitely overpriced and they were definitely um, overpaying on their dividends. So, you know, I definitely can see that and why they went through the process. So right now, uh, I'm totally fine with the uh, five-year growth rate being at a negative, um, but I will be paying attention over the next like two years or so to see how they're increasing their dividend year over year, because that's gonna play a big factor into it. Now, the fact that it's already currently over 5% because of its market price, uh, I'm not really too worried about it having a lot of growth. I usually like to see double digits in five-year growth, but with everything going on and the current yield, I'm okay with it. And I'll, I'll show you here, um, in a moment as well too with uh, different companies as far as having double digit growths because sometimes I can deal with a very low dividend yield if the five year growth rate is much higher. Now its current annual payout is a dollar and six cents. So right now I have over those four shares. So I will be getting paid out pretty nicely um, every single quarter because that's what they are currently paying. Um, and then their payout ratio is 68.77%. Um, so pretty pretty good um, from what my expectations are, which is usually around 60 to 70% um, as far as payout ratios. Um, I don't like seeing things closer to like 90% unless they're REIT. Um, that's just my personal preference, of course. All right, so if we take a look at the dividend news tab over here, um, like I mentioned, they did a dividend cut a little while ago, which was back on February 22nd, 2019, they took a 36% cut. So they didn't suspend the dividend, which is great, but they did cut it, of course. So it went from, it looks like, yes, yeah, 62 cents, uh, 62 and a half cents per share down to 40. And then it's been consistently at 40 for quite a while. Um, and then February of 2020, they did not increase the dividend. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of it had to do with everything going on in the economy um, with, you know, world events and whatnot. So I definitely saw that it not having an increase this year, or at least 
so far in the year because they can still increase their dividend later in the year as well if they so chose to so that would be nice to see so i'm definitely going to be buying more into uh craft here um like i said i have 4.16 shares so i'll definitely be bumping that up here in a little bit as well for the month of june now like I said, I have another stock here in the consumer products where I will be buying some more stocks for the sake of dividend focus, and that's gonna be with Hasbro. So right now I have about $132 value into Hasbro, which is uh, right now 1.819 shares of the company. Um, my average share price is 71.51, and the price on the market right now is 72.56. So. Uh, it looks like a lot of the stocks that I've been buying, I've been dollar cost averaging on, which is great now that um, the market is going up a little bit. I am definitely seeing some good returns on my overall account. So we can go here onto Seeking Alpha and take a look here. So the PE ratio on this one is 18.63. So kind of on par with what I look for when it comes to the PE ratio. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the dividend scorecard here. So this one right now, Hasbro has a dividend yield of 4%. Um, so really solid dividend payout. Um, you can see here annual payout is $2.72 per share, um, which is fantastic. They do pay out on a quarterly basis. So we're looking at about 68 cents um, every single quarter. Seeing that I almost have two, that's looking pretty nice um, every quarter for me. Now the payout ratio is quite a bit higher for me. Um, I know there's a lot of tensions between like the US and China going on right now. So that does make it a little hesitant, but I still feel long-term that they are gonna have a really good position in the market. And then they've been paying out their dividend growth right now for over 17 years, which is always fantastic. Um, and then their five-year average is actually 9.58%. So that to me is really good. It's close enough to the uh, double digits that I absolutely love. Um, if we take a look at the dividend news here, usually I can kind of go through and see what their percentage was last time. So it looks like in February of 2019, they had a dividend increase of 7.9%, uh, which is well above inflation, which is always great. Um, I always try to keep that in consideration when it comes to investing with dividends is you know the actual growth rate that they have every year. Because if a dividend doesn't have any growth whatsoever, um, that is also not a great thing because then your money that you're getting paid out is worth less every single year. So if it's keeping up with inflation at like two, three percent, that's good. If it's getting seven to you know eight percent, nine percent, that's awesome. And then anything above you know ten to twelve, fifteen percent every single year, that is honestly like really, really good on your money growth, even if the percentage that you're getting paid out in dividends is not so high. The fact that every year it's growing at a good rate is really awesome. So Right now, um, this is going to be another company that I will be buying some more into. Um, like I said, I have, you know, the 1.819 shares, so I'll definitely have to buy more so that way I can get some value in this stock because it still has some room to come back, I believe, if I go to the summary here. So I think their 52-week high was uh, $126.87, and that was... It looks like in July of 2019, and it's been kind of going down here for the last couple of months, right before all the events of, you know, February and March of 2020. But if it gets anywhere close back to that, not only will I be getting a good and healthy dividend, I will also be getting some great value uh, and gains on that stock as well. All right, so the next one we're going to be looking at here, if I go back to my main portfolio, is going to be, I personally put it in the tech. Um, I know a lot of people have it in uh, telecom but I do have at t in this pie over here. It's actually one of the largest positions I have in my overall portfolio. So this one right now, current value is 317, and then I have 10.29 shares of at t So I am just over the actual gains on this overall because my average share price is 3071, and then the current price right now is 3082. So that is awesome that they are now above that. Their dividend yield is pretty crazy here. So let's take a look. Back on Seeking Alpha, we have the PE ratio at 9.25. So I definitely think there's a lot of value still left in the actual just gains that I can have on the stock, not just from dividends. Um, so I'm really happy there seeing where you know that can take us. And if I go to the scorecard here, we can see the dividend yield is 6.96%. Now, normally, Anything above like five and a half to 6%, I get very weary on that because 
there's good probabilities that there could be dividend cuts, there could be dividend suspensions. There's a lot of factors into that. Um, most of the time with those high yields, it could also mean that the overall you know, value has just dropped dramatically and the dividend yield hasn't followed suit with like those cuts. So, you know, that that really does scare me a bit, but with AT&T, I have a lot more security based off of, you know, history helps a lot um, in where they were, and then also a lot of the things that they are doing in the future and where they're planning on going. So I, I still see that as a good opportunity, which means I get 7% on any of the money that I'm putting in right now. Uh, their annual payout is $2.08 a share, which is great because they pay out quarterly, which is equaling out to 52 cents a quarter. Their current payout ratio is 64.37, so it's pretty close to on par with my 60% or less for the payout ratio. Now, the biggest downside to AT&T right now is their five-year growth rate, which is pretty abysmal. It's at 2.09%, so that means it's barely keeping up with inflation. But with having a dividend yield of over 7% or close to 7%, I should say, um, I'm okay with that for now. Um, I wouldn't really want to put crazy amounts of money in there just because of that low um, growth rate. I want I want something a little bit more from that, but can't complain when you got 35 years of constant dividend growth. There's a lot of security in that. Never a guarantee though, so keep that in mind because there have been some companies with everything going on in the world where they've actually cut their dividends. I'm pretty sure it was Exxon was one of them. They were paying a dividend uh, for quite some time. I think it was like well over like 50 years and then they just cut it which was crazy. Uh, Ross and Disney also cut their dividends as well, amongst tons of other companies doing it. So never great to hear, but kind of understandable as well at the same time. So if we're here in the dividend news for AT&T, we can see back in December of 2019, they increased their dividend by 2%. So like I said, barely keeping up with inflation, but still nonetheless, it's a good increase. So that way your money just stays relevant at the time that you're getting paid out those dividends. Now, if we go back to my main portfolio here on M1 Finance, let's go and take a look here. So right now, the last one that we're gonna be talking about today is gonna be under the real estate tab here. Now for me, real estate is really nice to have. I try not to keep it anything more than 10% of my portfolio. Um, I just don't wanna over invest. So right now, um, Realty Income is gonna be the fourth stock that we're gonna be looking at here today. The current value is $346.25. I have about 6.23 shares in the company. Average share price, $54.83, and market price, $55.49. So all four of the stocks we talked about today are just barely over my average price because I've been dollar cost averaging while everything has been down. So that's always a really nice thing. So let's take a look here at uh, at Realty Income. So they had a 52-week high of 84.92, and they're back down to 55.49, which I think is a little bit more on par with where they should be possibly um, as far as being able to buy into them. Of course, that's just my opinion there. But we can see here their dividend yield now is 5.36% on your investment. So for me personally, that's a great time to be buying into Realty Income. I did have the ownership of them before everything went down, but I wasn't buying crazy amounts into them because at that point, um, they're, obviously you saw their prices were up to like $80 a share, which meant that my money was buying into it at like a 3% yield. So 5.3% is great. Um, their annual payout is 280 per share. They pay on a monthly basis, which is awesome for those that want to consistently reinvest those dividends. Um, their current amount is, point, uh, is 23 cents and a third, it looks like. So if you are you know, having a full share, you're gonna be getting that pretty much every single month, which is nice. I believe it's on the 15th of the month, if I'm not mistaken. Now their payout ratio is quite a bit higher. It's 84.38, but they are a REIT, uh, which means they have certain requirements as far as paying out dividends. So I'm okay with that being much higher. They've been paying out dividends for 26 years, which is great. And then their uh, five-year growth rate is better than some of the other ones we looked at today, and that is 4.38%. So it's definitely keeping up and going a little bit above inflation and being over 5% yield. I'm okay with this not being in the double digits. And let's take a look and see what the last increase was. 
So the last increase was in March of 2020, um, and they increased by 0.2%. And they've actually done this plenty of times where they increase their dividend multiple times in a year, which is not common for most companies. Um, but obviously 0.2% is nothing, um, but I'll still take it. But it looks like back in January of 2020, they increased it by 2.2%. So they, they're doing pretty good there when it comes to doing it multiple times in a year. I'm totally fine with that if that means my money is becoming more valuable when it comes to payouts so that way that money can get reinvested even faster now as i mentioned these are four stocks based off of what's currently in my investing portfolio so make sure you always do some extra research when it comes to figuring out what works best for you now if you want to keep on learning more about dividend investing check out my video right over here thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in that next video